Hey everyone, my name is Tegan, welcome back to Sandy Rights. Today we're going to be talking about this book right here. This is Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. And I was just going to say I love this book so much. This is the Owl Crate exclusive edition, which I was gifted from a friend who bought the box and didn't want the book. And first of all, I just want to tell you how pretty this book is. Like, map. We have this dust jacket, which is beautiful. This is also a signed edition I believe. Also we got some stained pages. And um, where's the where's it where's it gone? Yeah, this is a signed edition. So this is a very special book to me. And also the I think the original cover is a white version of this. I think the black one suits it so much better. So nice. So Among the Beasts and Briars was wonderful in this very quiet classic way. Yet the world building in it was still still very breathtaking and whimsical and so vivid. It opens up in a very simple and quaint part of the kingdom with Keris, who is the like rural gardener's teenage daughter, and she has magic quite literally in her blood, which marks her survival from the wood curse, which was a curse she came in contact to with when she was a child in like the woods that surrounds the kingdom. She is also best friends with the royal heir, whose name has slipped my mind. <laughs> and other important characters in this book are a very mischief mischievous, mischievous and melodramatic fox, who quickly became my favourite character. A, a fox. This fox right here, I believe. And um, the fox himself hit pretty much every single character trope that I love and then more. And I think that's all I can say about giving away too many spoilers. Not like important big plot spoilers, but just character spoilers, which I think are equally important. So a majority of this book takes place on a journey through the forests. And forest settings are the love of my life, especially as someone who basically grew up just surrounded by trees. I live in a small town and there's a lot of forests. Things like this are for me. <laughs> The descriptions about this forest really emphasise the creepiness and I love the attention to detail, especially on the people who are affected by this wood curse, as well as all the other monsters that are hidden in the shadows. Some of the plot at this point around like the middle part of the book is kind of predictable, but the book as a whole does, um, it follows more of a traditional fairy tale style, like a very fairy tale way of storytelling. But it definitely made up for some of the lacked elements I would have wanted in other areas, especially this slow burn romance. A very slow burn romance, I will say. And there's so much bickering and banter that really brought the characters and their chemistry to life, and I was entertained, even if I knew how it was going to end. I would say my one flaw for this book, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, it's still an incredible book, it's probably it's in like my favourites show from Goodreads. But the thing that lost the star for me is that the retelling was kind of maybe too quiet and quaint in some moments, especially in comparison to the type of retellings that I usually lean towards. The first chapter literally has Keris's mother. This is where the spoilers come in, by the way. I should have said it at the start. There are a couple of spoilers specifically right here. So the first chapter shows Keris's mother getting like stabbed through the chest through the ha the antlers, I think, of one of the forest monsters, and then she becomes cursed, and then she dies. And there are a lot of close encounters and some very like, wonderful descriptions of these monsters. Yet they don't really hold a large role in the story. A lot of them are hyped up to be like these old gods who used to like take over the world, and they appear at the final battle scene, but pretty much just stand on the sidelines. It's more as a decorative threat rather than the actual threat that's been hyped up for this entire book. So I think what I wished, well, what I wish would be for these characters to actually have more of a role in the story, and that would have really read the book, really made the book for me. Because this book has these very few horror elements that I mentioned, but never really acted on. So, like, yeah, they've laid the groundwork for a lot of the darker fairy tale and then just don't go into it. But this also didn't break the story. The incorporated eerie elements were still very wonderfully written 
and it did add a very good amount of depth and intrigue to the simplicity of the overall story. Finally, my favourite part of this book is that it is a standalone. <laughs> I do love a good series, there are many good series behind me, but this book perfectly wrapped up the entire thing in its own book. It doesn't need another series to elaborate on the story or to even like drag it out much further than it should, to like risk the chance of ruining the story. So this book just being a, a, a single book, a fairy tale in a book, it has this like very sense, big sense of warmth and familiarity and it's the kind of story that I would come back to as a comfort read at some point. However I do love in this book, after the epilogue, there are a couple scenes about other characters and how they're doing after the finale of the book. That kind of suggests that there could be more to come from this universe. Maybe not from the original cast, but from the side characters. And that is something I would definitely have an interest in reading if it comes to fruition. 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 If it comes to be, I'll be interested in reading more in this universe. So I have a feeling that this review as a whole maybe comes off as a bit negative, but I feel like if I said more, I would have to like this entire thing would be a spoiler. It wouldn't be a review, it would just be me rambling about how much I love certain aspects. So this is my formal statement, I guess, that I do generally love and enjoy so much of this story, so much more than I can say. So thank you for watching this video. In the description, I believe, I'm going to put a link to the blog post review of this book if you prefer to read it and not listen to my rambling. But if you're at this point in the video, you've listened to my rambling. But thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.